What happens if you put your head inside of a particle accelerator and turn it on? Kinda like this Hot Wheels loop, particle accelerators accelerate particles to nearly the speed of light. And this guy, Anatoly Bogorsky, was unfortunate enough to stick his head inside of one while it was on, and this is what happened to him. Scientists use these giant circular machines, also known as atom smashers, to see how subatomic particles like protons behave while traveling at the speed of light. Doing tests like crashing them into each other and other complex science stuff. And yes, I said at the speed of light. Well, almost. They get it up to like 99.9. 99999% the speed of light, because 100% is still impossible at the moment, but hey, we're getting close. They do this by accelerating subatomic particles like protons in a long circular vacuum tube that's colder than space. They start off in a smaller loop where they use electric currents from really strong batteries to get the particles moving fast, and magnets to keep the particles on a stable path as they curve through the loop to be fed back into the batteries and get even faster. This feedback loop gets them fast enough until they're fed into a bigger loop to reach even higher speeds. And they inject a second set of protons here so they could play Ring Around the Rosie with each other and just keep getting faster. They're then fed into the final loop where the two sets of protons are accelerated in opposite directions so they could collide into each other and do science. This right here would be the Large Hardon Hadron Collider, the biggest particle accelerator in the world at 27 kilometers in circumference, where the protons travel the entire circular distance more than 11,000 times per second. So yeah, it's fast. The LHC is in Switzerland and contains 1.8 billion kilometers of wires. Enough to go the distance of not around Earth, but of Earth's entire orbit around the sun twice. Or from the Earth to the sun and back six times. Anyway, so that's cool and all, but now that we know what a particle accelerator is, let's put our head inside of one. On July 13th, 1978, a scientist named Anatoly Bogorsky was working on the U-70 synchrotron particle accelerator just outside of Moscow, which is much smaller at 1.5 kilometers, but the speeds are pretty much the same. So there was an experimentation room in this lab where the accelerator protons are exposed to open air for a brief moment, and they had bare safety measures in place to make sure that no one walks in when a live beam is going. But Bogorsky showed up to the room five minutes earlier than he was supposed to. Somebody forgot to lock the door, and they the emergency light that signaled a live beam burnt out. Say hello to Murphy's Law. He enters the room and doesn't realize there's a beam of protons traveling through the open air in front of him because they're both silent and invisible. He bends over to have a look at a few monitors and accidentally puts his head directly into the beam of trillions of protons traveling basically the speed of light. That's 76 billion electron volts of energy passing through his skin, skull, brain, and out the other side. But the craziest part? He felt no pain at all and there wasn't even a hole in his head. That's because protons are so small that they physically passed in between the empty space of the atoms in his own head. And the voltage didn't stop in his head, it just passed right through it, which is why he didn't die from 76 billion volts. All he reported was his entire field of vision being overcome with a light brighter than a thousand suns, but a light that only he could see. This light was inside of his head. He kind of tripped out for a sec, but once he realized he was fine, he logged the experience and went home without telling anyone. But the next day, his head started to swell, so he went to the doctors, and they calculated the exact path the protons passed through was head in. Although he survived, in the years to come, he lost hearing in his left ear, started having episodic seizures, and the nerves on the left side of his face were destroyed, freezing his facial expression in place for the last 45 years.